sports, it's called a misdirection play. And when you're talking magic, it's the sleight of hand. In politics, it's called business as usual, right? And in the midst of all of our international banking worries, and with all of our problems at home with inflation, immigration, and safety, the Fed announced last week its intention to launch the Fed Now tool in July. I'm an ex-guest, has mentioned this a few times already on our show, and I wanted to bring it up again, because whether it's intentional or not, we're not hearing many people in mainstream media talk about it. Now, the banking crisis has conveniently kept it off the front pages. Is this going to be the slippery slope of a central bank digital currency where we, in essence, get rid of all cash and rely on our government debit card? I mean, how do you pay the paper boy or the kid that mows your lawn or shovels your, your drive? And for that matter, are we really ever going to need 80, 87,000 IRS, IRS agents if all your income is digitalized and there for the government to see anyway? I mean, come on. We're bringing back this expert. Please welcome to the show, Rebecca Walzer, one of my favorites. Thank you very much for taking the time, Rebecca. You're awesome, and you always have some uh, different insight into these types of things. What do you think about uh, the Fed Now tool that they announced quietly last week, and nobody's saying a word about it? Yeah, you know, no one's been saying a word about it, Scott, for a while. I mean, you're on your show, you know, we started getting into it last year and people were like, what are you talking about? No one's heard of it. And the mainstream media is not going to start announcing this or connecting it right now because of the banking crisis. Because what we are starting to see with the Exchange Stabilization Fund, ESF, as well as the fund they set up for, obviously, SVB, and kind of this consortium of global countries coming together to say, hey, we're going to backstop banks. If they start to peak together, wow, all these banks start to seem to sort of be having liquidity crises and we're going to digital, we're going to have digital dollar Fed now platform live July, you start to add up two plus two equals four and you start to sort of see where this is all going and, and, and the Federal Reserve and the government can't really allow U.S. citizens to make that conclusion that this is kind of a design thing moving us, as I've been saying, from the end of this one system to the new system and and uh, that's what they think is going to happen. And they're they're actually going forward in earnest. All right. So how does that roll out? I mean, is it automatic control right away? I can't imagine that's going to be the case. Is it going to be in parallel? What's what's going to happen? So I think what's going to happen. Well, let's just let's just play out the best case scenario for them and the worst case scenario for us, because I'm a lawyer and I look at extremes of worseness. And so the truth is that, you know, we Americans are way too independent, independent and fiercely freedom, you know, uh, ascribed that we are not going to just go to a digital controlled central bank digital currency, especially with the Federal Reserve not being a government agency. So what has to happen is either one of two things, either the system will collapse and this is a designed and planned thing that the complete existing system and I have a feeling it's a three-prong attack it's not just a liquidity crisis that is being leveraged right now but it is also going to be obviously any kind of war escalation and it's also going to be um, some kind of black swan event you know that would happen with the market so if you have a com or, or even just like a cyber attack we've been hearing from the World Economic Forum Scott this whole year that cyber attacks we can expect in the next 24 months they have a really good history of saying something and within six months it happens we already saw this on, you know, in January with the FAA shutdown, we saw it in Canada a week later with another shutdown of airplanes. So either we're going to have some kind of cyber attack, we're going to have a bank liquidity issue, and we're going to have some kind of war is escalation issue, which is all three already happening in earnest. All of those things come together to freeze the system and then simply move us from the, exist the existing system to the new system. And it's really easy to move people when you tell them you've lost your money, uh, the bank is insolvent, and now you're over here. And if you want to reclaim your assets, you're going to have to create a digital ID and go to the digital dollar fed now system. So it will be either some kind of economic collapse event or they could learn from Nigeria. Nigeria thought they have about 60% of their population that's using crypto blockchain cryptocurrency. They thought they would really easily accept a Nigerian equivalent of the digital dollar and the Nigerians didn't. So they started limiting, as we discussed before, Scott, their ATM ability, their ability to get cash out of their actual bank to the equivalent of 35 US dollars a day, which obviously is not workable so that forces people onto the new currency system they will use one of the two of those things that's how they'll implement it yeah i saw that research and that research really was based on the fact that they thought that the nigerians would adopt it very easily because of the, their you know their likeness of uh, of crypto but it hasn't yeah, yeah. Been, yeah it hasn't been the case though so if you've got somebody that's already a, a willing participant that doesn't want to uh, 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 embrace it how well do you think america will do that 
America is the most freedom-loving country. We've lost a tremendous amount of freedoms. If I went through a list, it'd be two pages long since coronavirus. It's very upsetting and discouraging. And so I think in general, Americans would be really reticent, especially if Americans understand what it is. Unfortunately, mainstream media, and uh, they are not going to put out there, this is absolute, I don't want to call this currency. This is an electronic voucher system that is controlled by the central bank. That's what it is. It is an electronic voucher system that is controlled by the central bank. It is not currency. Currency money supply is supposed to store value. It's supposed to have an autonomous feature to it so that, you know, it doesn't really matter who the buyer or the purchaser is. You don't necessarily know. It's a strong man transaction, you know, and that is not the case with any kind of central bank digital currency. Decentralized finance, cryptocurrency was supposed to be the exact opposite. It was supposed to be a store of value circumventing central banks and global currencies. And so that was supposed to be decentralized. This is the exact opposite. It might be on, we don't even know if it's on the blockchain, the way they're implementing it, but it might be on the blockchain, but it's on the blockchain centrally controlled by the Federal Reserve. Right. And so then you can put your crazy hat on because it might not really <laughs> be that crazy, but they could just start controlling like the Nigerians, uh, what you spend it on, right? Not that, not that you lose your freedom on what you can and cannot buy. That's probably the basic thing. It's actually integrated. If you read about the smart cities, and this is why we have to be against smart cities, Scott, we have to be against anything that tries to limit our ability to travel. Right. But it's the smart cities. If you if you move to a smart city, the 15 minute city, your ability to purchase beyond the 15 minutes will be eliminated unless you have a travel pass. This is totalitarian control. We we are, it is coming. We have to start talking and speaking against it. Otherwise, it's upon us. People think we're nuts until they actually go read it.